Good morning, Belzer. I'm Sam. And I'm Demi. We are here to bring you the latest in Belzer news. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Today is Wednesday, September 14th. It is National Cream Filled Donut Day. Our opening was this year's So You Think You Can Dance winner, Kita. Today's lunch menu is soft taco or walking taco, pepperoni bosco stick with cheese, Italian chef salad, variety deli sandwich or wrap, refried beans, and broccoli with cheese. In the news today, some United States military veterans have been deported to Mexico because they were not citizens of the U.S. Here is CNN with the report. How many years has it taken to get to this point? I've all been deported since 2004, so a little bit over 10 years. More than 10 years in Mexico to finally get into this line for a Mexican passport. The first in a very long series of steps to try and return to what he calls home. But not to Mexico, to America. Hector Barajas served five and a half years in the U.S. Army, honorably discharged. Life was tough after the military. Barajas was in a car when another passenger fired an illegal weapon. After a jail sentence, the country he called home since age seven, that he served as a paratrooper where he had a family, including a daughter, pulled his green card and deported him. Is this what you thought would happen when you left the military? Um, no, I never thought that I would uh, be deported. I didn't even know, I thought immigration would be like for somebody that, like my uncle that's coming across and gets caught. But it's not. U.S. veterans who run into legal troubles are also deported under current U.S. immigration laws. With Donald Trump now suggesting he'd look at undocumented military members with an open mind. It's a surprising and welcome turn for Brajas. I don't approve of his, what he said about Mexicans and immigrants, but I do approve of anybody wanting to get a veteran's home. Will he do it? I don't know. I really don't think so. Daniel Torres doesn't buy Trump's promise. Torres was a lance corporal in the U.S. Marines, fighting in ground combat in Iraq. He was honorably discharged. How did the military figure out you were undocumented? Well, after I got back from Iraq, I volunteered for one-year deployment to Afghanistan. That's when the military figured out his papers were fake. Why did you lie to the military? I want to be able to say that I haven't done something for the country, that I've done something, you know, to earn my place in, in, in the United States. Lying was enough to get deported. He's pled his case in U.S. court and just this spring became one of the few granted his U.S. citizenship. It's a path Barajas hopes and his Tijuana based deported veteran support house will travel. Barajas has more than 300 deported U.S. vets in his database. But according to the ACLU, there are thousands of other U.S. servicemen and women who could end up right here, deported out of the United States in this exact same situation. Barajas now has new hope. After years of fighting, he has a court date to argue for his citizenship. Step one, a Mexican passport. Are you hopeful? I'm hopeful. I'm, I'm excited. I love my country. I love my daughter. You know, I just can't wait to be home. Oh. Ryan Lochte's debut on Dancing with the Stars was interrupted by protesters who stormed onto the stage. Security officers rushed the protesters and supported them out of the blue. They were arrested. Iran has threatened to shoot down American military planes. Here is Fox News with more information. First on Fox tonight, Iran threatening to shoot down American military aircraft. Three U.S. defense officials tell Fox News tonight over the weekend, Iranian military warned two U.S. Navy plans to change course or risk being shot down. The planes were flying over international waters off Iran's coast. The officials say the U.S. pilots ignored the warning and continued on their mission. Now to Tamiya with sports and weather update. Good morning, Brilla. So the weather, <coughs> today's weather would be a high of 79 scattered thunderstorms. Last night, volleyball won. Tennis teams both played study books and won. Today, girls played to the park at 515. Remember, Bells and Bruins. Remember, Bruins, Belzer will be having a middle school night at LC versus Pike game this Friday. 
All five Life teams are free and will be getting recognized. For everybody else, it will be $6 to get in. Game starts at 7. Help us bring home the win. Now back to our anchors. Thank you, Tamia. Mr. Connors will also want to let you know that LC's middle school night on Friday. Any Belzer student attending must be accompanied by an adult. All students who are not being recognized must carry their student ID with them at that night. This year, students... This year, students will need an Indianapolis Public Library card to check out books from our school library. Ms. Cole is suggesting that you put your library card on your lanyard with your ID so it is available at all times. Further information about the book checkout process will come to you in your language arts classes. Our BTV reporters recently interviewed two of our new staff members. Here is their report. So far, I'm loving it. Lawrence is a great place to be. <laughs> As seventh graders, we have got a lot of growing up to do, but I love love of kids. I'm very lucky. Right now, we're working on a project called This I Believe, and I personally love this project. It's based from a um, radio show back after World War II um, in the 50s, and basically famous people were invited to speak on the radio and tell the rest of the country what they believed in, kind of give everybody hope since everybody was kind of scared after the war ended. Mrs. Roll, how long have you taught seventh grade? How long have I taught seventh grade? This is my first year teaching, so I'm really super excited. Um, I graduated in May, and this is my first job here at Belzer, and I love the township. Uh, yes, most definitely. How well do I? I love the students. They're my babies. By the end of the year, I would love to see for us to be able to draw realistic and then express ourselves the way we would in if we were making our own art as actual working art. Dino's Club is it time to get trained to work, trained to work with Dino, our school dog. The club meets after school on Mondays for 7th grade only. The 8th graders interested in this club will meet during C&D lunches on Thursdays beginning this week. You must have you must have a permission form to attend. Pick one up from Miss Nowens in room C210. French club is open to all students, not just those taking French class. The club meets after school on Thursdays in Mrs. Trotter's room, C109. Up, up and running club will not meet until next semester. However, the Junior Latinos Club does meet on Wednesdays after school. They meet beginning this week. Last night was a kickoff event. Here is a video highlight. Here's today's interesting fact. Reindeer hair is hollow. Today's celebrity birthday is Andrew Lincoln, who turns 43 today. He's an actor from England who is best known for, for starring as Rick in The Walking Dead. On this day in history, 1999, millions of people living along the East Coast began to evacuate due to Hurricane Floyd. Our quote of the day is from Arthur Balfour, who once said, Enthusiasm moves the world. Not to Mr. Harshow with the rest of the morning announcement. Have, Have a great, great day, day, Bruins. Good morning, Bruins. Uh, I was not here yesterday. I was actually out of the building at a meeting, and I wanted to take an opportunity to talk to you about three quick things this morning. The first is reading logs. Yesterday was the first day that we collected reading logs, and uh, I want to, first of all, thank all students who did what they were expected to do. Remember, uh, we talked about all the different benefits of reading, especially outside of school and uh, those things will help you as you grow as a learner um, and as a citizen. Also, it will help you because you will get a good grade in your college prep class. And then the third way it might help you is we will have some incentives. So if you got your reading log completed and turned into your teacher, they should have given you a reading log ticket. You can fill that ticket out and then your teacher will deliver those to the main office. Friday morning, I will draw 20 names from that um, set of tickets and I will call those students down to receive some incentives. I'm also going to let you in on a little secret. Throughout the year I normally don't tell students if reading log uh, incentives are going to be individual or as a whole class, but this week we did individual and next week we are going to do whole class incentive. So I want you to encourage your classmates to make sure that they get their reading log done this week as well because next Tuesday we will collect reading logs again and I will ask teachers to tell me how many of their students 
turn the reading log in as expected. Any class that has at least 85% of their class turning in reading logs will receive donuts next Friday. So please do your part to help your class out and also encourage your classmates to do the same. Second, uh, the announcement was made, but I want to make sure this is very clear. This Friday night will be an awesome night at Lawrence Central High School as we host Pike High School for the LC homecoming game. And I appreciate that Lawrence Central is going to take the time to recognize all of our fall sport athletes. Students need to understand, and they just made the announcement. I know Mr. Connors has let you know it's been out on Twitter, but I want to make sure all students understand that they will need their student ID to get access into that game. So please make sure you have your ID with you on Friday night. And then lastly, just a quick little motivational reminder today. Guys, sometimes uh, life will throw you uh, some curveballs. Sometimes some things come your way that are out of your control that uh, maybe don't make you happy. Maybe you, you're assigned with a task that you don't really want to do. Maybe your parents have chores for you. Maybe you have an assignment in class that your teacher gives you that you just don't like. Sometimes you don't have control over those things, but you do have control over how you choose to respond. You can pout, you can complain, you can have a bad attitude, you can do lots of different negative things, but I encourage you to just remember that you have a choice. In all situations, you can't always control what happens to you, but you definitely can control how you respond. So try to make an effort today to respond positively to those around you and to all the situations that life may bring with a positive attitude and good choices. Thanks. Have a great day.